Hi there, I'm once again Ghost. We've reached the end of the published content that made up the Sack Cat legacy. However, as I mentioned before, we were literal children during the heyday of the Sack Cats, or at most becoming angsty teenagers. So as life moved on and our attention was drawn elsewhere, a whole slew of projects were left to fall by the wayside. And this video serves to be a brief rundown of all the ones I can remember or find evidence of. The very basic organization I've given this list is to simply go from the sack cats with the least amount of cancelled or unrealized projects to the ones with the most, and then present those projects in rough chronologic production order. So let's go! Rap, Space Cat Pirates 3. This one, admittedly, is more speculative than anything. Rap's description for Space Cat Pirates 2 tells the player to let him know if they think a third installment should be made. However, that obviously never happened. Whether this third installment was never made due to a lack of community interest or due to Rap himself no longer being interested in making it is unknown. Tangle, further episodes of the Cap Brothers miniseries. This one is pretty straightforward. Firstly, Tangle titled it the Cap Brothers miniseries, and secondly, the Giggles' title card states it to be episode one, implying more episodes were to follow. While this didn't end up happening, it's unknown if Tangle had ever actually started making any additional episodes. Jack's Cat Brothers Season 2. Between the releases of Court of Love and Captains vs. Captains, Jack had actually gotten Fred's permission to make a second season of the Cat Brothers series. Unfortunately, there is nothing known beyond that as he did not actively talk about the project and quickly seemed to have dropped it. Lux and Lion Ace Attorney, Turnabout Sax Trilogy. While not being a sack cat himself, Lux did have a set of projects featuring sack cats in development. As the name suggests, this was meant to be a trilogy of films starring Lux and Lion in an Ace Attorney type world. The first film was to have Fred be accused of murder, with Lux being his lawyer and Lion being the prosecution. This was also the only film of the three to enter production, having a logo made, costumes created, and sets built. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to those. The plots of the following films are unknown, however, the second would have had Lux and Lion swap roles, with the third bringing the two together on one case. Babs was not as active in the LVP film space as some of us, but she did have a few projects under her belt. Sack Cat Friends. She was at one point going to create her own spin-off called Sack Cat Friends. However, the only things proving it existed are a single image of the logo that Babs uploaded to her profile, and a silly little version I made and uploaded to my profile, and Babs is admitted to forgetting for the details about it. Wilford Wharf Stash Lion the Cat Animation. This lost project is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. It was an animation Babs had made using sticker panel that was a recreation of the Lixie and Markiplier animation Wharf Stash, except starring Lion as Mark most of the time. She removed it sometime after Little Big Planet 3 released, and the only remnants of it are a couple of images she had uploaded to her profile. And here we have Fred, the main man himself, who actually does not have many known unmade projects. The Cat Brothers New HD. Shortly after the release of the Cat Brothers movie, Fred announced that an HD revamp of the movie was in production, with HD in this instance standing for highly decorated. This version of the film would have had a more detailed look and fixed some visual errors from the original, potentially even changing or adding shots as well. Fred never gave official confirmation that the project was cancelled, but it's a safe assumption that he dropped it due to his personal interest in LBP declining. The only remnant of it is the initial announcement trailer.
A follow-up to the Cap Brothers movie. Going back into speculation, it's possible a more direct follow-up to the Cap Brothers movie was planned, or at the very least, considered. I assume this due to the fact that during the film when the main characters are in the cave learning the history of the Sackcats, they question a blue and green orb in the center but receive no answers. Then, the film's post credit scene focuses on the orb once more, implying that it had some sort of significance. Despite this, it never reappeared in the series. It's unknown if the orb was meant to show back up in the series or if a full-blown sequel film was intended to explain its purpose, but either way, it's clear that this was a plot thread that Fred eventually lost interest in expanding on. Being the triagonist of the series and a friend of Fred's, Lion was a pillar of the group and thus had a good handful of unfulfilled projects. Lion Shorts 4, 5, and 6 Shortly after the creation of Lion Shorts 3, Lion had put the 4th, 5th, and 6th installments into production. Neither 4 or 5 got very far along with him only creating a few elements for them, and all he had for 6 was the level itself designated. LS4 was titled Sausage, to which he believes it might have just been a short meant to be random for the sake of it. LS5 was titled Lion Plays Games, which if we remember correctly was actually a collaboration between me and him where Lion would have been sucked into video games using something I made up called the Game Portal. Seemingly the set he built was based on the game Marble Madness. LS6 was simply titled Series Finale, implying that it was was, shocker, the final Lion Shorts episode. Although, apparently he had also given that designation to LS5 as well, so it's not known if these were actually meant to be the end of the series, especially since he had opened up an email for people to send in ideas for future shorts. Frozen in Fear a side film that Lion was intending to make after or alongside the next entry on the list. Frozen in Fear was to involve the main characters, Lion, Ghost, and a sack cat named Bacon, who I'll elaborate on later, getting stranded on a frozen island and potentially encountering an ice witch. The plot was not expanded beyond that, and it never entered proper production. Through the Alternate Universes Trilogy, slash Lion's Invention and Shenanigans Trilogy. This was Lion's major project throughout his tenure on Little Big Planet, a trilogy of films starring Lion and friends going across multiple dimensions and causing shenanigans. TTAU was to be the first film, initially starring the primary cast of the Cat Brothers series, before shifting to starring Lion and Ghost, with additional main roles rotating between Bacon, Lux, and our friend Conan who was never fully inducted into the Sat Cats. The plot revolved around Lion inventing a handheld multiversal travel device, initially given a super meme name that I will not be reciting here before being renamed to the Lion Leon Alternate Universe Traveling Device, which he would then use to chase down an evil Alternate Universe counterpart of himself named L. The following films would have continued the plot of the first, but also featured Lion creating new adventures as well before finally taking down L. Actually, Lion has stated that these projects aren't definitively cancelled, just postponed indefinitely, and that they might be actualized outside of LBP. Oh hey, it's me, Ghost, the one with the most cancelled Satcap projects. I hereby give myself the Stop Overloading on Ideas and Actually Finish a Thing award. Not proud of it, but I'll wear it like I am. Nega Twins. This was meant to be my own film that was a sort of spiritual sequel to Lions Through the Alternate Universes, not necessarily taking place in the same continuity, but having a similar feel. The plot would have centered around Lion creating a cloning machine called the Positwinizer, where it would go haywire and end up launching out evil female counterparts of him, Ghost, and a sack cat named Bacon named Tiger, Phantom, and Porky, respectively. If anyone was curious, this was long before I realized I was trans, so that's why Ghost was meant to be male and Phantom was meant to be female instead of the other way around. Lion would then run away from his lab to the nearby docks to meet up with Ghost and Bacon, where he would tell them the situation before the titular negative twins caught up to them. I forget the specific details from there, but the gist would be that the trio would have to find a way to defeat their clones, with potentially a romance blooming between one of the guys and their counterparts. This film was meant to be the debut of the Sat Cat Bacon, who is unrelated to both the Bacon from Lion Shorts and the very similar looking Dino from the Cat Brothers. Bacon was a friend of mine who for a while was the third part to a trio alongside Lion and myself, with his character intending to act as the comic relief to the cocky ghost and the intellectual Lion. He also would have been a major player in the Frozen and Fear trilogy and one incarnation of List, but since none of these projects ever made it off the ground, he never actually made his debut, with the description of Lion Shorts 2 being the only published confirmation of his existence. Most of the characters were to have actual voice acting, however a couple of characters, including Bacon, were simply going to use the in-game gibberish voices. I had cast Tangle and Sky from Cat Brothers in the roles of Tiger and Porky, but never did cast Phantom. While the film never did start full-scale production, I had actually written part of the script on a Word document I have sadly lost over the years, and from there I was rewriting the lines in-game for the actors to record. I will now play the opening credits I had made as well as all the lines we had recorded, apart from these two that seemingly never were recorded or perhaps got deleted by the game somehow. Oh, sweet crumbs at her! Oh, yeah. Come on. Ah!
Oh, no, bye. Whoa. I'm going to kill you. Well, thanks for the phony introduction. A deal with the devil, they always say. Hmm. Wolves, eh? Well, that's a difficult decision. Let's go with... Oh, crap. Oh, you have got to be kidding. Oh, my God. Oh, my bloody God. The dock. All I've got to do is jump. Oh, how bloody perfect. How can this get any bloody worse? Oh, for crying out loud. Then these three random girls come and try and bloody kill me. Okay. Oh, no. When did you start saying bloody so much? Well, it's hard to say, really. Oddly, one of the girls actually pretty much look like me. That's... odd. No, I don't even have a sister. One of your crappy inventions break? Hey! They're only really slightly crappy. The plus twin eyes are. No, it can't be. Dude, the thing exploded. And you have a history of bad inventions. True. Could you tell that a dumb American wrote Lion's Lines? Pokey Sat Cats, fighting game. Uh, I don't really remember this one. As you can obviously tell by the name, this was meant to be a fighting game with Sat Cats being prominently involved. I was going to put it in beta first to test out the mechanics before fully committing to making the game, but the beta was never finished. In fact, the only thing that ever was finished was the startup screen. The characters would have been Ghost in a secret agent getup, Jet and Jordan from Sat Cat Roommates, Lux and two unknown additional Sat Cats, as well as, for, for some, some reason, reason, Neon Cat, Tac Neon, Gur from Invader Zim, and a recolored Flame Claw from Invisibles. However, Tac Neon and the Invisible were not going to be in the beta. The only other thing worth mentioning is that I used a user-created recreation of Mr. Brightside by the Killers for the title screen, which you have been hearing during this section. Unfortunately though, there was no name attached to it, so I have no idea who actually made it because it sure wasn't me. I'm sure you have questions, and believe me, I do too. But I don't think we'll be getting any answers for this. Fired Up and Frost and Flames. You may have been confused by my mentioning of the Frozen and Fear trilogy and use of this screenshot when I only brought up the one film and lion section. But that's because the other two were my projects that he okayed. Fired Up was going to be the direct continuation of Frozen and Fear, but with the main trio now having to contend with a fire-themed location and antagonist, and Frost and Flames would have been the finale that combined elements from both. Aside from a couple of logos, the films never made it into production, primarily because Frozen and Fear itself never materialized, but also because I had only really based them off the thematic concept of fire and ice without putting too much thought into the details. Sat Cat Roommates Episode 3 the technical fourth episode of my spin-off series that was promised at the end of the second episode. I do not have much of an idea of what the plot was meant to be beyond resolving the Lux and Mike cliffhanger, but from these sets I was building, it appears it would have involved a restaurant and an actual Cinderbook store. Beyond that, the only concrete detail I recall was that I was determined to make it longer than episode two, which possibly would have entailed ditching the voice acting entirely and switching only to the in-game LBP gibberish voices. Ghosts Cat Brothers Season 2 that's right, two separate versions of the Cat Brothers Season 2 were going to happen at one point, both of which had Fred's blessing. Unlike Jack, who seemed to be working on it alone, my version was to be a collaboration between me and a bunch of my friends. And additionally, characters would now be given voices, albeit the in-game gibberish ones. While I had put the first episode, titled The Replacements, into production, I had not gotten past the opening scene, which was mostly finished apart from some rough pacing. Former Bambles, the Barley Birds, and Folly Clap. Huh? <laughs> 
Afterwards, the cast would then split off with Fred, Rap, and Lux in the A plot, where the three would have to learn to get along, and Ghost and Lion in the B plot, causing general shenanigans. I didn't plan further episodes in depth, but the general idea was to absorb Sat Cat roommates into the show, with the studio crew acting as the primary A plot and the cast of roommates acting as the primary B plot. If you're wondering why Jack was shipped off immediately, it's because at the time, a number of my friends and I were not particularly fond of his actor due to his behavior and some comments he made in the game. Since this happened years ago, though, I can't recall any specifics, so I can't say in retrospect whether or not this action of mine was justified or petty. I only ever released one trailer for this project, which didn't actually show what the season would entail, instead just showing off who would be working on it. Sack Cat Super Squad. Around the same time I had been working on the Cat Brothers Season 2, I had come up with another idea for a spin-off titled Sack Cat Super Squad, also known as SSS or Triple S. This spin-off was to be set in a not-too-distant future in the city of Sacktropolis, where the offsprings to some of the characters from Cat Brothers and Sack Cat Roommates would gain superpowers and go up against a recently resurfaced Mr. Magma and a new army of his creation. Now, if this looks and sounds familiar, that's because it was a straight-up rip-off of Lunatics Unleashed but with Sack Cats, except here there was at least some precedence for a setup like this. Not a ton, but still. Some kids aren't that creative, so they just copy what they see on TV. What are you gonna do? The first episode was to be called Things Change, and would have shown the cast get their powers, and I guess a spaceship, most likely belonging to Mr. Magma, was gonna be involved. I had created a simple set, costumes, some signs for locations referencing Cat Brothers characters, and some teaser images, with plans to fully work on episode 1 and the teaser trailer when Cat Brothers Season 2 had gotten going, but since that project stalled, so did this one. Sack Cat Roommates Rebooted as far as I can recall, this was nothing more than a rough idea I came up with while making the Cat Brothers Season 2 and Triple S, with this logo being the only thing I actually made for it. While my plan was to absorb the roommates cast into Cat Brothers, I guess at some point I had an idea either to remake the episodes I had put out or still try to have it coexist alongside Cat Brothers. To be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be surprised if I only wanted to reboot the project just to correct my misspelling of roommates. The Cat Brothers Reboot Project and to cap it all off, we have one last idea of mine to keep the Sack Cat universe going. A complete reboot of the Cat Brothers, created in LBP3. Initially starting as a simple remake of the series in LBP3 with more detailed sets and giving characters gibberish voices like I had planned for Season 2, it eventually evolved into a full-blown reimagining, both of which I had Fred's blessing on. The reimagined version was going to be a complete overhaul of the series. Ghost was going to be a main character, though Jack would have stayed in this version as well, and characters like Sky, Tyler, Babs, Kinsey, and Tangle would have played much more major roles roles, with Sky in particular being the movie studio's hairstylist who would routinely dye Ghost's hair wacky colors. The slice of life elements would remain, but focus would primarily be geared on expanding the movie making process, with Fred and Rap themselves now being actors as opposed to post-production crew. Sack Cat roommates would not have existed in this continuity, however most of its cast would have appeared in some fashion, and Bacon would have appeared as well. Poor Bacon so many planned appearances and not a single one being made. Other changes would have included changing the setting of the show from Hollywood to an original city named Am City, named after Fred's username, and the reimagined fifth episode would have kept Fred and Kizzy's romantic plot, however, Rap and Lion's plot would have been changed to Rap trying to figure out how to pay for a parking ticket. Now, whether or not the film would have been canon or recreated for this project was never decided. 
I did consider it for a long time, but I kept coming to the conclusion that I didn't believe it to mesh as well with the tone of the series itself. I had created costumes, tried out many different logos, and even had a new exterior building model created. But in the end, production on a full episode never began, and the project slowly died out. So that's all of the unmade and lost Sat Cat projects that I know of. However, before we wrap things up, I want to do a bit of a lightning round, briefly touching on a number of projects that weren't directly related to Sat Cats, but were more so Sat Cat adjacent. Further art showcases. At the end of LBP Sat Cats 2, Tangle promised more art videos were to follow. However, this was the last one she put out. This is here as opposed to being in the main section, as since she had made other non Sat Cat art videos, we don't actually know for sure if further ones would have been Sat Cat related. However, I'd say it was a safe bet. The Dog Brothers movie. This was meant to be Lux's own feature film, starring him and Mike in the lead roles. As I recall, it was meant to take place concurrently with the Cat Brothers movie, with Lux and Mike also being on the run trying to avoid capture. However, once Fred caught wind of it, he demanded that Lux either change it or cancel it entirely due to it being too similar to his own film. Lux would end up doing the latter. Prior to this, Lux had put out a short teaser for the film. It was simply comprised of close-up shots of Lux and Mike in a watery void, followed by them meeting in the center and presenting the logo, all set to a song I can't remember. As you could probably guess, it was taken down when Lux canned the film. So this teaser image I put onto the set of The Replacements is the only surviving evidence that it existed. As a side note, this whole situation is what led to me meeting Lux in the first place, and I put him and Mike in Sat Cat roommates with the intention of them being major characters as a slight jab towards Fred for the whole thing. Ghost and Lux level reviews number one, the Cat Brothers series. Lux and I, in a decidedly non sat cat outfit, were once going to make a series where we reviewed levels together on a five-star scale, with the first episode being on the Cat Brothers series. It was never finished, as I had more of an investment in the project than Lux did, however, it appears I was going to give the show four stars, and he would have given it three and a half. Now, while this is meant to be a lightning round, we actually did finish the opening segment, which I will now be playing. Lux and Ghost level reviews is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Hello, and welcome to Lux and Ghost Level Reviews. I'm Ghost, and this here is Lux. Hello, everybody. Today is our first episode, and on this first episode, we will be reviewing the Cat Brothers series. Oh, God, it's going to be painful. Each level we review will be giving a rating out of 5 stars. The rating will be determined by 5 categories. The 5 categories will be... Plot. Scenery. Acting. Characters. And humor. And then we will give the verdict. First up... The Plot. Just like the movie before it, the series is made by Fred the Cat, although unlike the movie, it doesn't really follow the same plot. The series takes place after Fred destroyed the giant robot that Mr. Magma had, and after Rap had lied. That's the main story plot, though each episode technically has its own plot. That's the main story plot, though each episode technically has its own plot. To be an agent, rights change announcement. Despite at one point being open to continuing to be an agent, eventually Lion lost interest in the series and decided it was well and truly over. However, I expressed an interest in continuing it in his stead, to which he gave me the series outright. This led to the production of a small video that would have announced this change in ownership. I recall it being very serious in nature, lacking any comedic elements and only taking place in one basic set, so it's probably for the best that it never got completed. TBAA, to be an agent. This is an oddity. Sometime after being given the TBAA rights, I decided to completely reboot it, but in the process, I sacked most of the Sat Cat elements. Now the series, given a DMC Devil May Cry name treatment, was to star a human ghost, a human Kizzy referred to as Kiz, lying still as a Sat Cat, and a penguin. On top of that, the show would now have a human host. Beyond costumes and a logo, this incarnation didn't enter full production. To be an agent reboot. Some years later, I again planned to reboot TBAA, now just being called To Be An Agent. This incarnation would have ditched Sat Cats entirely and focused on a group of humans, all based on real-life friends of mine at the time, with it leaning way more into the idea of it being instructional videos for secret agents, but still keeping the comedic tones of the original. I had seven initial episodes planned. On top of that, I had apparently been confident enough to think that I could create three whole seasons. With that, we've gotten through all of the unmade and lost Sat Cat projects that I know of. It's always sad to look back on what could have been and what never was, but really the only thing that mattered was that we were having fun messing around in games we loved with our friends. And hey, it's always possible that one of these projects could re-emerge in some form in the future. I'd still love to create a Cat Brothers reboot if Fred was still cool with it, and I know Lion still thinks about List every once in a while. Though, 
I think we can all agree to leave Pokesack Cats and Triple S in the past. Here's to looking to the future and whatever it may bring. Thank you for watching.